Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, one of these days, I will learn to uh, maintain a consistent schedule when it comes to uploading videos and streaming. But obviously, today is not that day since it's been three weeks and I've not talked about what if. But anyway, let's get into talking about um, the show now. And man, let me tell you something. This week's episode was amazing. But before we get into that, let's talk about the two episodes that came before. Um, so, okay. Um, so episode six of what if was interesting um that's not really a word that i ten- generally use to describe things I-, I usually say whether i like them or not but this one was it was definitely something to-, to put it one way so basically episode six of what if was what if uh killmonger had saved tony stark so basically you know the episode starts off playing out largely the same as, you know, the beginning of the first Iron Man movie, except in this time, instead of Tony Stark um, getting almost killed by his own weapons, you know, his own Jericho missiles, uh, Killmonger comes along and, and saves Tony Stark's life by throwing the missile away before it can explode. Oh, excuse me. So, um, <laughs> now obviously the most uh, obvious thing that could happen from this is that you know because tony stark um didn't go through the experience where he ends up becoming iron man that of course um he doesn't become iron man but um there's a lot more to this episode um besides that when when i first saw that this was going to be a what if episode i i really wondered um what else could possibly happen and besides tony stark not becoming iron man i thought that maybe you know it would lead to tony stark becoming a villain uh, because he's Becoming friends with Killmonger, or perhaps, you know, Killmonger is actually a good guy in, in this universe. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to what happens um, later on. So, so basically, um, Killmonger um, exposes uh, the plot that Obadiah Stane had to, uh, uh, to kill Tony Stark, you know, have the Ten Rings... You know, he, he basically gave the Ten Rings uh, Stark's own weapons t- to kill him so... Obadiah could, could take over his company. You know, it's the same thing from, you know, Iron Man 1, except this time Killmonger is blowing the whole thing open before it has a chance to kick off properly. So, um, you know, because of all of this, you know, and, and of course, Killmonger provides proof for all, all, all of this happening. So, you know, Killmonger and Tony Stark form a friendship, and uh, Tony... Uh, uses his technology to, to build um, Killmonger, uh, an army of, of drones, basically. Um, they're basically, you know, they look like Gundams, but not really, like, like the models are built like Gundams, but they're not painted like Gundams. They, they look very cool, uh, you know, very familiar looking. And, um, but, um, let's see, uh, what else happened? Oh yeah. So, um, because, um, Tony, uh, didn't, never built an Iron Man suit, um, he never, uh, you know, he never invented an arc reactor that's small enough to power a, a suit. Um, I think he comes up with the idea in the episode, but Killmonger suggests to him to use vibranium instead. Uh, and so, and that's, that's where Claw's I- I- involvement, um, you know, remember, uh, in Age of Ultron, the, the scene with Claw, you know, he has vibranium, and that's why Ultron came to him, so he could build a vibranium body for himself. Yeah, that, that's basically um, where Killmonger was going to get the vibranium from. And and, uh, and apparently, word of this leaked, which led to, um, you know, T'Challa, Black Panther, and, and Rhodes, War Machine, uh, being there. And um, ba- basically, Killmonger, um, you know, betrays them and, 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 and kills them and... and you know, blames the whole thing on on uh, on Claw, really. Um, you know, so his involvement uh, doesn't get out to the public, but uh, Tony actually manages to find out because apparently he has surveillance footage of what really happened um, on that day. So um, when 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 Stark, um, you know, confronts him about this, they end up getting into a fight, and Killmonger ends up killing Tony Stark. Um, and then eventually Killmonger ends up uh, killing Claw later on. Um, 
as well you know like, like there's a lot more to it than, than what i'm describing here <laughs> i only watched the episode once so i'm really bad at, at remembering exactly what what happened but, but basically you know um i think what happens is um killmonger um blames uh tony stark's death on on wakanda uh and so uh that that gives uh General Ross, um, a reason to, to send uh, Killmonger's drone army uh, into Wakanda to, to, you know, as revenge for, for killing Tony Stark. But um, Killmonger pretends to, to help the Wakandans stop them by, um, by telling them, you know, how to, to, to stop the drones. But then he, you know, they're actually being remote controlled by him. So... Once they are deactivated, he reactivates them, and then it leads to a fight scene in Wakanda where they actually had to um, destroy the droids, um, drones, rather. And uh, all of this is, of course, so that way um, Killmonger can become uh, the new Black Panther. And um, now, um, while all this is going along, uh, going on, uh, Shuri, who is younger because this takes place uh, sooner than the Black Panther movie. Uh, again, this is <laughs> back in, in the first Iron Man movie, so of course she's younger. Um, but yeah, um, she's suspicious of Killmonger the entire time, and the episode ends with her apparently having evidence that Killmonger was behind everything that happened in the episode, and she pre presents this evidence to Pepper Potts, and then the episode just ends, like, on a cliffhanger. And, um, yeah, this this episode was, was kind of weird for me because while I liked it, um, it left me wanting more than, than, than what they gave us, you know? Like, like, the previous episodes, you know, like, I wanted to see episode one continue its story, and, and I wanted to see episode two continue its story, whereas... This one, the story here doesn't feel like it's finished. You know what I mean? Like, I don't necessarily want to see the story continue as much as I want to see the story finish. Which, to me, means that this is definitely an episode that we're going to see followed up on uh, in the second season of, of What If. You know, like, like there's no way that, that they can have an ending like this uh, and not follow up on it. Gotta blow my nose real quick. So yeah, um, that's definitely, uh, again, I thought the episode was good. I thought it did a very good job of, of showing uh, a different side of Killmonger. Because, see, here's the thing. Uh, aside from giving us alternate versions of, of characters we already know, the what if... See, <laughs> yeah, this episode actually does a good job of demonstrating one of the great potentials of What If. It's it's not just showing us alternate versions of the same characters that we, we already know, but also uh, expanding upon uh, characters that died by allowing us to see more of their character. And I think this episode did a great job of expanding upon Killmonger's character. Um, so yeah, in, in that respect, I think the episode was great, but again... It doesn't really feel like yeah, they, they, they properly finished the story. And I'd, I'd rather see it... Um, I want to see it followed up on, not because I wanted to see it continue, but because I, I want to see it finished, you know? But but other than that, I thought the episode was actually very good. But again, it, it was kind of weird for me because um, it was... Not only did it end in a weird way, but it also... Um, it was also very much... A lot more story focused than than the other episodes you know kind of like the doctor strange one actually you know the doctor strange episode which was amazing um didn't really have a lot of action in it and it was very obviously a lot more about the story it wanted to tell uh, much like this episode was but um yeah um i definitely think episode six was was interesting again it left me uh wanting more but i think um now, now talk about a, a juxtaposition because episode seven was was about what if Thor was an only child? So so basically, um, instead of Odin adopting uh, baby Loki, um, 
excuse me, after defeating the Frost Giants, he decides to return him back to um, his father, Laufey. And, and so because of this, um, Thor grew up never having a brother. And um, <laughs> apparently um, Thor not having a brother for some reason turns him into like a, a, a frat boy or, or, or something. Like because instead of, you know, being all about honor and glory or whatever, you know, Thor, Thor is just like this this bro dude who wants to party all the time instead, you know. So, you know, the, the entire premise behind the episode is, you know, Thor basically goes to different planets and, and throws parties and, and you know, th these parties are so massive and, and take place on such a, a global scale that, that you know, they, they like cause the destruction of, of, the, of their planets or whatever. You know, so, so, so basically, <laughs> you know, like, like, so all of this is going on, um, pretty much d during the events, uh, of the first Thor movie, like apparently, um, Odin, uh, goes through his Odin sleep, um, like, like he does in the first movie. We're not really given the reason why, um, because if you've seen the first Thor movie that then, you know, the reason it happens after uh, Odin tells Loki that he's adopted, and um, which of course happens after Odin has to save Thor and company um, from a fight with the Frost Giants. So we don't really know the reason why Odin is going through the Odin sleep uh, in this universe. But but basically, while Odin is asleep, you know Thor, you know is supposed to be responsible uh, and and looking after Asgard and whatnot, but. You know, like I said, you know, he's a bro dude in this universe. So instead, he's just going to planets, throwing parties, you know, without his mother's knowledge. And uh, basically, um, like in the first movie, uh, Jane Foster and, and, and her partner Darcy um, are, are investigating, you know, things that are happening in the sky or whatever. And of course, they discover uh, Thor and... and you know, this leads to them finding Thor's party and whatnot, and uh, this is how they meet and, and get to know one another. But uh, <laughs> what ends up happening is um, Nick Fury actually ends up getting injured trying to investigate the party. Like, um, he tries to approach Thor, and, and then Korg just knocks him out <laughs> to, to, you know, cannonball into a fountain or whatever. So Maria Hill actually has to act as the director of Shield while um, Nick Fury is apparently unconscious for the time being. So she decides to summon Captain Marvel uh, to deal with Thor, you know, to, to stop him from throwing all these parties and whatnot. So uh, they basically fight each other to a standstill, and I gotta say, uh, the <laughs> Captain Marvel versus Thor was a very interesting fight, you know, like, like I didn't think we, we, we would actually get to see it, and granted, in the MCU proper, we definitely would have never seen it, but that that's another great strength of what if, you know, being able to see things that we wouldn't normally be able to ever see in the MCU prime, so to speak, you know, so, um, they fight each other to a standstill, and, um, you know, Captain Marvel, you know, basically says that she's holding back and that um you know if she exerts her full power that um you know it would cause destruction basically do more damage than than what thor is doing basically so uh what what um what is suggested to her is that um she fights thor in an unpopulated area so they could launch a nuke um, to, <laughs> to hopefully um kill thor since they don't see any other way of stopping his parties um, so, <laughs> what Jane Foster tries to do is instead tries to, um, contact Thor's mother, um, by, by basically calling for Heimdall's help, and, uh, this is how she's able to, um, uh, reach Thor's mother and, and let her know that, hey, your son's gonna die if you don't do something about it because he's going to all these planets and throwing all these parties, you know, ruining the place and whatnot, and, um, and so, just before the nuke can be launched, uh, Thor's mother contacts Thor. And basically, uh, she, she tells him, you know, I'm on my way to, to, to see what it is you're really up to. And then, <laughs> and then so, so Thor, you know, basically tells all of his, all of his party goers to, you know, Hey guys, my mother's coming. You got to clean up the place now. I'm, I'm not joking around. You, you, you really got to help me, okay? So, so, you know, 
they basically <laughs> it's basically um like like a classic you know house party type of movie sort of sort of story but but on a global scale you know because Thor like I said goes all over the planet you know throwing throwing these parties you know so so they, they basically gotta clean up everything you know like and you know make it seem like 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 nothing ever happened all over the world you know b before Thor's mother arrives uh, but of course you know when when she comes to the planet and everything seems to be in order, um, Thor calls um, his hammer to him, and, and it's basically covered in Marty Bog greeds and stuff. So <laughs> that basically exposes that um, he had he had in fact been partying all along, and uh, so yeah, Thor has to uh, pay up uh, for the consequences of. of, of you know his lie gets exposed, and and he has to deal with the fallout of his mother finding out that he's not been um, responsible and whatnot. So, um, you know, Thor learns his lesson, you know, and um, tries to uh, ask Jane out on a date. But uh, what ends up happening is um, uh, basically Ultron w with. Uh, what looks like a fusion of Ultron and 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 Vision uh, with the Infinity Stones um, walks through a portal with an army of drones, and um, that's where the episode ends. Excuse me. Now, um, when that happens, um, the Watcher is actually narrating um, the ending of the episode and, and and saying, you know, all's well that ends well, or whatever. But then he he seems surprised when. Um, when Vision Ultron, you know, walks through the portal and enters the universe, like it was something that wasn't supposed to happen, which of course leads into the next episode, which we'll, I'll get into in a moment. But I do want to say that I actually like this version of Thor, even if he seems kind of like, again, he, he's basically bro dude Thor, <laughs> you know, and, um, and, uh, one thing that I didn't mention actually is that, um, Loki and, and, and Thor actually still know each other in this universe, and, and, and they're, they're good friends. Um, they're not brothers, again, you know, this is, you know, what if Thor was an only child, but, but they're still, you know, like, like good friends, except because Thor was never, uh, because Loki was never adopted, um, uh, this basically means that, that Loki has always, you know, been a frost giant, which means that we actually see Loki as a frost giant, and he looks actually really cool as a frost giant. Like, I don't think he's ever been shown to, to be looking like a frost giant before, and, uh, so this was definitely something new, uh, and, and something different that I didn't expect, and like I said, frost giant Loki actually looks really cool, so I, I'm glad that we got to see this, um, Definitely one of the best things that, that came out of this episode, other than the Captain Marvel versus Thor fight. Um, and, uh, so yeah, um, like I said, the episode ends with, um, hang on, hang on a second. The episode ends with, um, you know, Vision Ultron walking through the portal with, with the Infinity Stones, and, uh, which again ties into the next episode, which is, what if Ultron won? <laughs> so, um, uh, so basically the episode starts off with, um, with Black Widow and, and, and Hawkeye, uh, trying to get somewhere while fighting off an army of, of, uh, Ultron drones. Uh, and, uh, it's actually a, a really cool opening action scene as well. You know, we see that Hawkeye apparently has, has a cyborg arm now f because, you know, Whatever happened that where, where Ultron won in this universe eventually led to Hawkeye losing his arm and needing to get a cybernetic replacement. Uh, and, and he also has an invisibility cloak, which leads to a really cool uh, part of the fight where, where he, he hides from the drones and, and they come in. And then he's like, surprise! And then, and, you know, stabs them and, and everything. Like, it, it, it's really cool. Like, like I said, this episode... Is amazing, but but I've only gotten gotten started with talking about it. Like, <laughs> okay, so um, um, basically, um, the Watcher shows uh, what happened in this universe to lead to this happening, and and basically, um, uh, 
basically all it took for, for Ultron to win was instead of uh, the Avengers succeeding in, in stealing the vibranium body uh, that would eventually become Vision, um, Ultron succeeded in, in transferring um, himself into Vision's body, thus Vision became Ultron instead. Uh, and because of this, he was able to defeat the Avengers. Um, and uh, basically, he, he invoked a nuclear holocaust by um, accessing the nuclear clothes uh, across the world and, and launching all the world's nukes to make humanity go extinct. Now, um, the reason why Black Widow and Hawkeye are alive is because um, they were not on the ground at, at the time that this happened. So basically... Um, you know, they're, they're like humanity's last hope in this universe. You know, they're like the only ones who, who survived, or at least the only ones that we, we've seen that, that have survived. You know, I can't imagine there being anyone else, especially if this, um, uh, this scene that we're seeing taking place is uh, happening far after, um, you know, uh, w when Ultron launched all the nukes. Um, so basically, they, they go to... to um, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I almost forgot to mention the part about the Infinity Stones. Um, so basically, uh, after, you know, Ultron wipes out humanity, um, Thanos comes to Earth um, looking for the Infinity Stones. And, of course, he, he has all five already at this point. Uh, and Vision is the last one, you know, just like in Infinity War. But instead, um, Ultron just kills uh, Thanos immediately using the Mind Stone, you know, just slices him in half excuse me which um <laughs> I, I'm not entirely sure um uh just how accurate th that is um like like if killing Thanos is really that easy um some people might might say that because he has the infinity stones that he shouldn't be able to die but that's not actually true um the infinity stones give you immense power no doubt but it doesn't make you invincible you know what I mean like, 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 you can still die. You, you, you just, you know, you just have immense amounts of power. You know what I mean? Uh, it's hard to explain, but, but anyway, um, so, so Ultron kills, um, Thanos, takes the, the Infinity Stones, uh, and basically becomes a living Infinity Gauntlet himself, uh, and, and forms a new body for himself, you know, that, that looks like, uh, you know, basically that, that, that same, uh, robot that looks like a mix between Vision and Ultron that we saw at the end of the Thor episode. <laughs> and so, um, what this does is, with all of the Infinity Stones, Vision, or, or rather Ultron, gains uh, cosmic awareness and, and becomes aware that there are other planets in the universe. And, you know, re remember, um, Ultron was created by Tony Stark as, as uh, he, he was created in mind as a, a means of achieving peace and of course um ultron's idea of peace is there being no life uh you know basically wiping out all life is achieving peace uh and so when he becomes aware that there are other planets in in the galaxy he he basically goes to all of these other planets and starts wiping out all life in them and, and so eventually, um, when he arrives at Xandar, uh, Captain Marvel tries to stop him, but of course he has all the Infinity Stones, so she's completely powerless against him, and thus um, he succeeds in destroying all life in the universe. But as the Watcher is narrating all of this, Ultron's cosmic awareness starts to expand behind his observable universe, and he becomes aware of the Watcher and the multiverse. And uh, so, after that scene... Um, we see um, Hawkeye and Black Widow, um, you know, in, in this secret Russian archives place, uh, trying to find something, you know, a means of destroying um, this version of Ultron. And um, apparently um, Arnim Zola is the answer to um, dismantling Ultron. Um, just as a reminder... Um, Arnim Zola is was sort of Red Soul's right hand man uh, during uh, World War Two. Also, uh, you know, Captain America, the First Avenger, and you know, before he died, he uploaded his consciousness, uh, his brain, you know, rather uh, as an AI, uh, you know, so he could live on through this AI, and um, 
Apparently, there's a copy of him that exists in some Hydra base in Siberia. And so, you know, Black Widow finds this um, and they go and, and they go to this base and, and, and meet with Zola. And they basically um, download his AI into um, like a <laughs> it's like a USB uh, device, but attached to one of Hawkeye's arrows. So so they download um, the AI into that and, and destroy a. Uh, the computer and basically alert the Ultron drones uh, to their presence at the base. So then Hawkeye um, shoots uh, one of the, the Ultron drones uh, with the arrow so that way uh, Zolom's AI could, could download into the droid. And basically their plan is to uh, have Arm Zola's uh, AI override Ultrons so that way um, it can, you know, basically destroy all the Ultron droids and whatnot. Now, um, the plan actually succeeds, but because Ultron has discovered the multiverse now, he actually finds the Watcher, and, and, and they start to fight. And so because Ultron is no longer inside of that universe, uh, Zolom cannot um, override uh, Ultron's AI. So, we the rest of the episode is basically a fight scene between Ultron and the Watcher, and man! It is something else. Like, it is amazing. Like, like this is some Dragon Ball Z shit right here. Like, <laughs> like the, the Ultron uh, versus Watcher fight is... <laughs> I mean, I, I really just don't know what else to say besides the fact that it's just amazing. Like, like you really got to see it for yourself in order to see j just how uh, crazy this battle is. Like, like... <laughs> Like we we actually see um, the watch. Not not only do we get to see the watcher use his powers, but we actually see the watcher in a different outfit that, that looks re really cool, to be honest. Um, but basically, um, uh, <laughs> um, the watcher is not able to defeat um, Ultron, but but apparently Ultron decides uh, not to chase after the watcher and, and would rather um, you know continue to pursue his. Uh, destiny um or rather his programming as you know a robot for peace and whatnot and at the very end of the episode um the the watcher basically goes to the universe that the evil dr strange destroyed and asks for his help now um this is obviously very different from the previous episodes because obviously the next episode is going to be um the Watcher versus Ultron and, and us seeing um, how um, they managed to defeat him. So there's a couple of things that, that I I actually have to talk about um, with this episode. Um, um, when I saw the ending of the Thor episode, I thought for sure that this episode was going to be uh, the Vision Ultron uh, origin story. And then the next one would be um, how Vision Ultron gets defeated. And turns out, I was right, you know, this episode showed us how Vision Ultron came to be and how he got the Infinity Stones, and the next one is going to be, you know, defeating uh, Vision Ultron. Now, there's one scene from the, 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 the trailer for What If that we haven't seen in any episode yet, and that's the Guardians of the Galaxy as the Avengers. So, I assume what's going to happen is, um, it's not just Doctor Strange that... that um, the Watcher is going to ask for help. He's going to go to all of the other universes that we've seen so far and uh, basically ask their main heroes for help as well. And, and, and so, you know, the Guardians of the Galaxy uh, that, that we saw in the trailer for What If is probably going to be T'Challa and the other members of the Guardians uh, that we saw in that trailer. Uh, at least that's what I'm thinking, anyway. Um, there's also... Um, so basically, uh, one of the things that I'm sure people are going to bring up is that in the comics, uh, the Infinity Stones don't work um, outside of the universe um, that, um, that they were created in. Uh, and apparently the MCU seems to be playing by the comics rules uh, because we saw in Loki that um, they had like a, a whole drawer full of Infinity Stones and none of them worked. And we can tell that none of them worked um, Aside from the fact that none of them were active, um, Loki actually tried to use one of them, and it didn't work. So we all assumed that um, that the that MCU was going to be playing by the comics rules uh, based on this. But as it turns out, you know, because as we saw, 
you know, Vision Ultron was was able to um, travel through the multiverse, and and the Infinity Stones didn't lose their power. So, excuse me. Clearly, the MCU is not going by um, what the comics are, are going by. You know, different multiverse, different rules. You know, so you know that's not that big of a deal. But um, if if you guys uh, actually want want to know more about comic history, um. It wasn't always the case that in the comics the, the, the Infinity Gems don't work um, in the same universe, uh, or rather outside of the universe uh, that they were created in. That actually happened um, because of the original Infinity Gauntlet storyline. So I'm thinking what's end up going to... I'm thinking this is going to be the story where um, that rule is established uh, in the MCU. Like, I'm pretty sure... Here's what I'm thinking is is going to happen. We're going to get a post credit scene uh, at the end of the, the last episode of What If, where the Watcher um, approaches the Living Tribunal, and this will be our introduction to the Living Tribunal in the MCU, and he will basically um, make the case that what happened with Vision Ultron, um, that, that because of what happened with Vision Ultron, that Infinity Stones should not be allowed to work outside of the universe where they were created, and that's what's going to lead to this uh, rule that's in the comics being established in the MCU. That's what I think, anyway. Um, it's, it's entirely possible that it doesn't happen, of course, uh, because I'm not sure if they want to introduce the Living Tribunal in the MCU in what's supposed to be an, an anthology series, but it's very clear that, um, you know, like I said, um, I suspected from the beginning that there was perhaps going to be an overarching narrative that we won't see until the end of the series. And that's, of course, what turned out to, to happen. Uh, I wouldn't say this was a overarching plot necessarily, because, again, most of these episodes were very self-contained um, to the point where they could, in fact, uh, continue on their own. But... Um, if, if what I'm guessing is correct, um, the Watcher is going to go to all these other universes and ask for the help of the heroes um, who, who, we, who we saw featured in, in those universes uh, and ask them for, for their help for defeating Vision Ultron. Um, so, so, like, we're going to see Captain Carter again. We're going to see T'Challa Star-Lord again. Um, not sure if we're going to see um, Killmonger again. Um, or, or, you know, any of the heroes from the What If Zombies episode. Um, but, yeah, I, I definitely think that the Watcher is bringing together a team and not just asking, asking for Doctor Strange's help uh, in the next episode. Um, so, yeah. Um, well, okay, there, there is one other thing that could happen. Um, they, they might assemble a team but still be unable to defeat... Um, Vision Ultron anyway, so what they might end up having to do is uh, trick Vision Ultron into going back to his own universe uh, so that way they could, uh, you know, so that way Arnim Zola could uh, take over his AI and, and, and defeat him that way. Uh, but at the same time, you know, they might be able to do that plan and, and that might not end up working. So I don't know. <laughs> this is an extremely open-ended episode and, and the way, you know, that they end up defeating Vision Ultron um, uh, could go many different ways. Um, one, one other thing that, that I do want to say, though, is that um, in, in the comics, uh, The Coming of Galactus, which is a Fantastic Four story, um, is basically... It, it's, it's not only the story that introduced Galactus, it's also the story that introduced The Watcher. And uh, basically, Galactus coming to Earth is basically the event that, that leads to uh, the Watcher uh, not wanting to... Uh, basically, he want, it's what caused him to break... It's what makes him break his oath of, of non-intervention. You know, like, you know, his, his, his whole ordeal is to, uh, you know, just watch what happens in the universe, observe what happens and document it, not, not to interfere or anything like that. But Galactus coming to Earth is, is what causes him to break that oath. And uh, I'm thinking for the MCU, uh, you know, um, instead of it being Galactus coming to Earth that causes him to break his oath, it's Vision Ultron threatening the multiverse that causes him to break his oath. I mean, that, that pretty much is, is what happened in this episode. He, he, has, he has decided that um, 
he he is going to intervene and 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 you know stop Vision Ultron from destroying the multiverse. So uh, yeah, and I, I gotta say that 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 one scene during the fight with uh, Vision and 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 uh, Vision Ultron and um, the Watcher, where, where where Vision Ultron becomes massive and, and basically takes a bite out of the universe. Uh, <laughs> during his fight with the Watcher, that reminded me of Galactus very much. And, uh, man, it just makes me want to see Galactus intru introduced into the MCU even more than, than I already want to see him. Like, <laughs> I absolutely cannot wait for the Fantastic Four movie, uh, which uh, is sadly not coming out for a while. But, man, man, am I looking forward to it. <laughs> My God. <sighs> but, yeah, um, that's basically um, What If Episode 6 through um, eight. Uh, the, the next one is going to be the, the last episode. There were supposed to be 10 episodes, but apparently they couldn't finish one of them in time, so it had to be cut. Um, I'm not sure if that episode is going to instead debut in season two, um, but um, hopefully we get to see it uh, one way or another, um, even if, uh, you know, Season two still ends up being nine episodes instead of ten, you know, because apparently they want to be consistent and keep season two, you know, as long as uh, season one, you know, even if they couldn't finish one of the episodes for this season. But yeah, that, I think that's pretty much all I had to say about the, these most recent episodes. Um, I don't know if I would say that uh, episode eight is better than the Doctor Strange episode, but at least it's at least as good or almost as good, you know, like, like it's, it's really amazing. You, you, you just got to see it if you haven't watched it already. So, uh, yeah, um, that's going to be it for, for, for me, uh, for, uh, this, uh, what if, uh, discussion, uh, hopefully, um, I'll get to see, uh, Shang-Chi eventually and, uh, Venom comes out, uh, Venom 2, uh, Let There Be Carnage, um, that movie comes out today as well, so uh, hopefully I'll get to see that, and hopefully I'll get to see Shang-Chi eventually, you know, and then I can start doing these uh, Marvel Monday discussions uh, live again <laughs> very, very soon. Uh, so yeah, because I actually do enjoy talking about this stuff live rather than in a recorded video. But yeah, that's going to be it for, for, for me for today, guys. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, hope you all have a good day, night, whatever, uh, and uh, yeah, I'll Hopefully, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to doing these weekly instead of uh, buy or try weekly. Uh, God. Yeah. Uh, thank you all for watching. Yeah. I'll see you hopefully next week.